Hi guys, Cameron here and welcome to another episode of my Fall of the Necromancer campaign. This is a weekly series where I upload a video and talk through one of the scenarios as well as showing off gameplay of um, the scenario over the week that we've been playing for the Fall of the Necromancer. This one is Three in the Broken. It has been a good game actually I will say compared to last week which was um, the exploration of Dorgal Dur. Um, if you would like to check out that or any of the other ones in the series please go have a look at the playlist there is a full playlist on everything to do with Fall of the Necromancer. But anyway th uh, Three in the Broken what does it look like? It looks like this. Now this is the map, it's a two by two that we are meant to be playing on. And as you can see, there is kind of lots of different nooks and crannies and that sort of stuff. Um, it is a strange looking game board and that will be showing off when you see the gameplay that we had. Um, we used masking tape on a two by two tile that Warhammer Glasgow kindly provided to us and it kind of showed off um, where and what we were allowed to go through and what we weren't allowed to go through. We tried to put a couple of ruins there, but without building this board as kind of like a dedicated board, it's very hard to do this. Um, so yeah, um, we, we did the best that we could, but like we've done in every other episode so far. So anyway, let's get into the explanation of Three in the Broken. I've got the book in front of me. Um, and let's read it. The board represents the dungeons of Dorgaldur. It should consist of a series of tunnels, corridors, and passageways, forming a twisting labyrinth where each tunnel interlinks with each other. See the map for an example of how this may look. There should be five objectives placed around the board, one in the centre, and the others should be positioned so that each is approximately six inches from a different corner of the board. So we just took the map layout that they've got there and we just made it as best we could, um, give or take what kind of my geome uh, geometric skills really were. But anyway, starting positions. The good player uh, places Gandalf touching the center of the northern edge and the evil player places three in the broken within one inch of the center objectives and then places one hunter orc within one inch of each objective. So now you kind of know how many um, participants are going to be and what they are, but we'll get to that in a sec. Objectives. Gandalf must break the spell con uh, of concealment that lies upon Dorgal Dur and then restore the mind of Thrain. Those who dwell within the fortress seek, uh, seek to slay the Grey Wizard. The game lasts until one player completes their objectives. Good player wins if they are, are able to disarm a, each objective first and then subdue Thrain. The evil player wins if Gandalf is slain. So there is a couple of special rules. Um, to start off with, there is sentries. And each of the Hunter Orc begins the game as sentries as described in the main rulebook. And that is pretty simple. It's in there. There's a table and all that. It does not matter for just now. The spell of concealment. Gandalf must disarm the spell that lingers over the five objectives. To disarm... Uh, to, I can't say disarm, apparently. To disarm an objective, Gandalf must be within one inch of the objective and successfully cast the command magic power. This happens fairly regularly, to be fair. There is another special rule, there's actually quite a few. The wizard has come. Gandalf causes terror in this scenario. So he always causes terror. And what we did, actually both of us, we put up, I think it's terrifying aura, where you cast it and that then means it's 3d6 and you discard the highest um, from your courage test. And that was real hard to then get into combat with Gandalf. We were only getting one, maybe two orcs. Uh, eventually after the sentries were um, alerted but yeah very very hard to get in but kind of good for that scenario or this scenario grip of madness so this is for Thrain Thrain is not subject to his shattered spirit rule in this scenario instead he is simply treated as an evil model 
Subduing Thrain. So this is for Gandalf to Thrain. Gandalf may not strike against Thrain if he wins the fight against him. This restriction ends when the five objectives have then been disarmed, in which case Gandalf will not actually slay Thrain, rather simply break the madness that was that has hold of him. Um, so doesn't kill him, just breaks the madness. And then the last special rule, quietly in the darkness. Gandalf may not use sorceress blast or collapse rocks magic powers during this scenario. So awfully hard to then do magic kind of really from afar. So we've got to get into combat. Then we have got finally the participants and it is seven models. Um, it is Gandalf the Grey on good. And then six models on the evil, three in the broken, and five hunter orcs. Nothing particularly hard. But that is the scenario that we have got for today. What I'll do now is I will start doing a lovely little voiceover and we can jump to the gameplay. So here we go. So here you can see our game board, which looks awfully funny with all this masking tape, I completely agree. But this is our game board set up, roughly like it asked in the scenario. We've got the five objective markers with dice on them, so if the dice are not there, they have been commanded. Gandalf moved out, and I, am being the orcs this time, I managed to roll real, real well on my sentry duties. Um, Thrain staying in the middle, and he does for most of the game. I'm kind of just moving around, trying to get some wounds on Gandalf. If I remember correctly, I did manage to get one win through, even with the re-roll of the fate. But a command has gone off on that object marker, and Gandalf comes rushing down to kind of the other side. An orc is dead, and because of that, that's a fifth, pretty much, well, maybe a sixth, I suppose, actually, there's six models on my side, but a sixth of my army gone, and Gandalf just keeps on managing to win against me, and I'm struggling to figure out what I want to do, so I castle up in the middle, and then Matthew starts running back and forth, and he's like, well, if I can kill this guy, he immobilizes him, if I can kill this guy, then I'm sorted, but he's managed to get two of the objectives done already. And it just kind of keeps on going That's like it. this. Eventually, there we go. There's a third. He's immobilized. That guy down there, Matthew's awfully happy with himself there. And he keeps on running up. So I'm like, mm, do I put some models out? I wasn't too sure. I didn't really know what I was meant to do here. But in the end, it wasn't particularly the best. Gandalf managed to sneak round. Thrain tried to sneak back. But eventually... Um, he did manage to actually get all of them and subdue Thrain. So we re-racked and there's me playing as Gandalf. And I'm like, hey, I'll do very much the same idea. So take them on one on one, kind of run around, command each of them and it will be fine. There isn't too much of a problem. And then Matthew managed to roll fairly well on his sentries, alert everyone. And then they all just came charging down for Gandalf. Wasn't particularly the best for me. And it did mean that we weren't too sure. Those two didn't roll particularly well, so I did actually move them back the first time. But then, as you can see, Gandalf is starting to get surrounded. And this is essentially what happens for the full game. Gandalf gets surrounded. I think he manages to kill one of Matthew's orcs, but that was pretty much it. I'm obviously not allowed to strike Thrain, so when Thrain was in combat, I because he's got better courage, he could get in, even though it causes terror. I couldn't then kill Thrain, so it was just pushing back, and it was trying and trying and trying. No Sorcerer's Blast, no nothing. It was a very, very hard game to fight against, and it was just kind of what it was. I was trying to use Will, trying to use Might, I ended up using my Fate Points as well when I lost fights. And it was just, what do we do? And I ended up losing, unfortunately. That was it. Game over. Done. Dusted. Gandalf. Goodbye. And so long. There you have it then. Gandalf managing to win one scenario and losing the other, unfortunately, or one side of the scenario and then losing the other side. I am just a terrible general, clearly, when it comes to scenario play. It's just not one of the things that I'm able to do. I don't know why. I'm not particularly much better at match play, though, am I? Because I keep on almost or actually winning wooden spoons. It sucks, but I really enjoy myself. These are absolute great scenarios, and it's well worth the time and the effort I'm putting into these.
So what is next? It is Capture of the Grey Wizard. And because of Thrain the Broken, um, there is actually, there is two sets of scenario um, buffs for this. There was none for the last mission, like Thrain the Broken, but there is two for the Capture of the Grey Wizard. So what does Thrain the Broken scenario give the Capture of the Grey Wizard? So, because Matthew won both, he will get both these. When he's playing as good, in the Capture of the Grey Wizard scenario, Thrain may, may re-roll failed courage tests. And when he is playing as evil, in the Capture of the Grey Wizard scenario, Thrain suffers a minus one to his courage test value when testing for the Shattered Spirit special rule. So Matthew getting a few buffs next week from that scenario, but then also when it was Flight to the East. Um, if you remember that scenario, and I was struggling to say Flight, if you would like to see that, you can obviously go back and watch it. But when playing as good in the Capture of the Grey Wizard scenario, the Necromancer starts the game with only 20 points of will. And in the evil side of the Flight to the East special rules, in the Capture of the Grey Wizard scenario, the Necromancer may re-roll ones when making courage tests. So we will see what comes from that. I can't remember who won the Flight to the East scenario, so I might actually have a buff. We can only hope. Uh, I can't remember who won what. But yes, that one will be coming out hopefully in a week's time. And... I've been really enjoying these. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying the scenarios as well. If you have, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, please like, comment, subscribe. Use the affiliate links down below as well. I have Element Games, Goblin Gaming and Noble Knight Gamings. All of them give me kickbacks to the channel and allow me to buy things such as this book, which I greatly appreciate. And when the new stuff comes out, it will also allow me to buy that. So... Thank you so much for watching. Take care and bye-bye. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and use my affiliate links in the description below. Take care and bye-bye.